All right, and here we are in a quick little organization episode where we finally will get into validation. So I did end up going with Zod. I checked out a couple libraries, and I mean, Zod seems pretty easy to use. So I was just tinkering around with it beforehand, creating a couple of schemas here. I have to find my pet schema with um, what a full pet object should be. And then I created this partial schema, uh, creatable pet, which is what I'm going to use for my actual validation. Will I actually use this fully fledged one? Maybe, maybe not. Um, we'll see. There might be some use cases for it. So for now, I've gone ahead and preemptively defined that and made this creatable pet schema that did set these as optional properties. So that's what I will actually validate with. So let's go ahead and start defining some middlewares and uh, we'll get our data validated. So we'll go ahead and import the request handler type from Express. And then I'm gonna call this is, is valid pet maybe. And we'll type this as a request handler to automatically type our request response and next objects respectively. And we will go ahead and also import, and I'm gonna be defining a lot of schemas in here. So let me make an index and just do some daisy chaining exporting. So import pets from dot slash pets. And the reason why I like doing this a lot um, is just I I prefer the like nomenclature of your imports that way. Um, it just makes everything look clean and polished. So we've got our incoming rec body that I want to check here. We'll set up a try catch. We will have a 400 get thrown. And I know that Zod, I have to go re-reference their docs, but um, I know that their errors, you can flatten them in some kind of way. I'm still very new to Zod. I've literally looked at their docs for just like a few minutes and went ahead and implemented the pet schema. But I know that we can flatten this and there's even a library that specifically um, is a wrapper of Zod for Express that will very nicely format your error messages for you. We don't necessarily need that. I think we can make one um, pretty easily, but I will have to look through the docs a little bit more on that. So for here, I'll just make a quick and dirty for the time being. Um, invalid data and We'll log out the error too, that way I can see it, see what like data structure it returns and see what, you know, I might wanna map over to create my own custom error message, but. Let's see, and I don't remember, are they synchronous or not? Uh, it is synchronous, okay, so. I do need to import my schemas and then I will try to do schemas dot pets dot parse no yeah yeah schemas dot pets dot creatable pet dot parse excuse me and then rec dot body All right, well, that lets us make a much more convenient validator for our incoming request body for our pet post request. So let's go ahead and implement that there. API pets for this post request here, instead of me doing this very crappy validation here, we can now do Zod's much better validation and 
we'll get our middleware imported here. And I think now, I was wondering if maybe their types would let you do like an extension behind the scenes of the rec body. I mean, I guess we could like modify it in our, our middleware, but I was just thinking out of a curiosity, you know, perspective, like, oh, if we can validate something there, can we assert it from that middleware as well? Will Zod let us, you know, do that? It very well may. Like I said, I'm, I'm very new to it, just kind of fooling around with it for the first time, so. But thus far, um, like, you know, that's nice. So let's go ahead and start uh, working on our user account creation one. I was just doing pets because that was a quick and easy example, but users.ts here. Let's see, and I'm gonna follow kind of loosely the same pattern where I'm gonna create a fully fledged schema that I may or may not use, but I certainly want to create a partial of that and that way I can have both the optional properties and also the database created properties as either nullable or undefinable. So, all right, so z from zod const user is equal to zod.object. And then let's go look at our user properties. So, ba, ba, ba. users ID is a UUID. So ID is a zod.string dot UUID. Boom, got that knocked out. Um, I am going to split my screen up a little bit here. Ugh, don't auto drag. So some stuff might get truncated in the screen recording for um, Beekeeper, but don't worry, I'm using this just to see the... There we go, um, columns and their data types. So users over here, ah, this is so much better infinitely better. Users ID name is a string. This is definitely required. We're gonna have a minimum of one character for the name and then a 64 character max. Then email, let's see, that will also be a Zod string with a minimum of one and I did set a max of 128 for that. We also will have a check to make sure it's a valid email as well. Password here. Now, granted, this is going to be what's coming in from the request body. So I really just want to assert it is a string. Um, I'm not going to make sure it's exactly 60 characters. I do want to make sure it's at least like I don't know, 12 to kind of start forcing users to use like decent standards. And then we'll do like a max of like 128. I feel like that's reasonable enough. Let's see, image URL. That is a string. That is also a URL. That is going to have a max of 128 characters as well. And then finally, our created at. And that's going to be a string, but specifically a date time string, which with Zod by default is ISO 8601. So that should have no issues. I'm going to be using um, for stuff like this that's database assigned, that works just fine. And for something like birth date, anything that's coming from the client side, you know, the birth date of the pet and the pet medication schedules. I'm gonna be using something like React Calendar and you can choose the outputted format or parse it into a specific format as well. So that will not be a worry downstream.
All right, ID, name, email, password, image URL is verified. Z dot boolean. All right. So let's go ahead and make our creatable user interface over here, or sorry, schema. So I will do user.partial. And with the partial um, construct of Zod, it's going to mark um, properties optional that you explicitly list out here. I don't think I clarified that in the previous one. But here, by saying ID true, that means it's going to treat ID as an optional property when I utilize the creatable user. So name, email, password, very much required when registering everything else, fully optional. Is verified is optional because the user has zero input on that. The well verification process is what changes that. Image URL, if they do choose to you know, upload one, great. Um, we actually can co-opt that code that we use to store pet images to also do like a user profile image. Um, that's like a really low priority one though. So that's not really the top of my list at the moment. All right, so we've got our user schema set up. Let's go ahead and import those. Cool. All right, we've got our user schemas defined. Let's go ahead and make a, well, registration middleware. Now, we have validated a lot of this code already um, in our rec bodies manually, so I'm basically getting to eliminate a good chunk of code, and I feel like after this video, the git diff is probably going to end up being pretty close to zero. Maybe a net positive, but... Oh, switch to WrestleMania. This is my D&D &D background uh, for my Luchador campaign. Which is a great, literally my favorite, but most terrible character I've ever written. Um... But yeah, so I feel like at the end of this, it's going to end up being more or less kind of a net, you know, maybe positive, but I feel like we'll get pretty close to netting out. So lots of good, cleaner, more thorough code. And for now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and set up just kind of a quick invalid data. I'm going to observe what the Zod error construct is kind of like. And then from there, I can maybe even make my own custom like Zod error handler or validation error handler. And then um, later, I'll also go ahead and set up my general server error, uh, global error handler. All right, but now I'll do schemas.users.creatableuser.parse. Oh, there is a parse async method. That's kind of nice that, oh, there is an explicitly defined parse async one too. That, okay, now that I know that, let me switch over to using that.
we've got that moved to async. We've got this moved to async. Let's go ahead and export that out. And let's slap this bad boy in front of our registration route. Oh, gross. Yeah, no, this is objectively <laughs> terrible. I get, the, the thing that I'm doing here is more or less like what Zod does, but they, they do it in a much kind of cleaner, more straightforward manner. So yeah, let me go ahead and actually delete my entire validator folder in utils. And uh, we'll just do a shout test to see what breaks. Which might actually not be all that much. <laughs> this literally might be the sole file where it was getting utilized. Okay, well, cool. All right. Well, here we will just run through the is valid user middleware. That ensures that we have at least a good defined name, email, and password. Let me double check that. So the partial of this, let's see, ID, name, email, password is verified. Yep. So we are verifying that at least these three exist with all of those properties. All right, not bad, not bad. And then, yeah, that lets us um, very, very, very conveniently clean up our code. Uh, just out of curiosity, I wonder how much Yeah, so we've actually taken out more than we've added, which is kind of nice. Now, granted, that is from the package uh, lock. Let's see. Oh, that also does not count. The diff doesn't count new files that haven't been staged yet. So. I mean, that would be like 19 net positive. So it would be like two insertions to 38. So we're, we're if we're under 36... I don't know why I'm like so hyper focused on this at the moment, but um, yeah, no, thus far implementing Zod really is a lot less, um, you know, painful than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I, it, it didn't take me too long to get started with the pet schema and then defining the middlewares to, you know, parse everything really is not that bad. So I'm sure y'all don't want to watch me repeat that for every one of these tables. It's going to be kind of annoying and tedious. So I will actually do another video where I, you know, stop recording and then I wrap up all the, you know, tedious stuff under the hood. So all that you're going to miss between the ending of this video and the commit associated with it is more schemas for this. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, seeing Zod get applied in this way. I'm liking it a whole lot thus far. And um, I know that, you know, parsing request bodies is not the sexiest code compared to some of the previous episodes we had, but it is pretty important as we're starting to get a little more in depth. And once I've got this validation in place, what my next step is going to be is creating a Postman collection to include as part of a testing folder in this repo so we can have automated tests and you know, I know that we're kind of slowing down on like the code production aspect, but we're setting ourselves up for better future success with this. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. And if you've got any questions or comments for me, feel free to drop them in the comments. Otherwise, I will catch y'all later. And I think that would be video 10 that we're now approaching. So yeah, exciting. See you then.